Right, so a little weird thing now, I'm gonna plumb up and find what I'm, I wanna show you what I'm trying to look for. But first, a little bit weird, uh, uh, me being fussy more than anything, but it will make sense, is the type of plumb that you use, just how important it is when you're trying to fish on these slopes on snake lakes. Because what you want really, you want a decent plumb here with a decent base. Yeah, I go for a 20 gram, so I don't need to worry about it sinking in silt because I'm fishing on a, a sloping bottom, so there isn't gonna be any silt there. All the silt's gonna be down the middle where I might use a lighter plummet. Uh, but for on the slopes, so if I'm using a 20 gram plummet with a decent sized base, that's the most important element to it. So with a base probably what, size of a 10p in my case and the ones that I use, what it does, it helps me stick on my slope. The narrower the base to your plummet, if you lose those little tiny bell type plummets, you find that they roll down the slope really easily and they give you a, a slightly false impression of the gradients of just how steep it is because they fall down it a little bit quick. So say something with a little bit of a decent base, that's just gonna help stick on the, the slope a little bit more and help me to get a much clearer idea of what is actually going on. So I'm gonna impale him on. Hopefully Andy will turn up with a few of them next time he goes out. And what I'm looking for, firstly, another thing we're pointing out before I plumb up, is the direction that I'm gonna choose, which one's gonna be my preference on the day. So obviously there's gonna be a few elements to that of maybe where you've seen some fish, um, maybe where your room is. If it's two pegs miss one, if you've got a bit of space in one direction, that's gonna be your way. But in all honesty, I'd say in most circumstances, my first choice, I'd be always to fish upwind when fishing on a snake lake. Yeah, just to make sure that your rig's presenting correctly on that slope by fishing whatever way the wind's coming from, or whichever way the toe's coming from, if that's a prevalent uh, force on the day, if you like, that's gonna help me to present my rig in a much tighter and much more stable fashion than if I try and go downwind where my float's gonna blow away from the slope. So by that, what I'm talking about is if I just ship out before I actually plumb up. So by going in this direction, because in today's case, the wind, is, there ain't much wind, but the, the water's definitely moving from left to right. It's pushing down this way of the canal. So because my slope's sort of parallel all the way along me in front, what I need to do is by laying my rig in to the left and pulling it into the slope and dropping him down there. Where's that spot that we're fishing? He's there. If you can imagine, by laying it in that way, my float wants to go this way. But my, float, my bait's actually going to anchor on the bottom in this sort of fashion, if you can see it on the angle there. So it's going to anchor on the bottom and the wind's going to actually hold it in place. Whereas if I were to go the opposite way, my float would be blown away from the slope and that would cause a slack line and it'd make my bait a lot, lot easier to move or it would make it move a lot more, which would cause an unnatural type of presentation. So this is going to make me more stable by choosing an upwind direction. Of course, I may have to abort that if there's no fish that way and go the other way, but I am going to get a better presentation fishing this way. So now that I'm in an area of my peg, that's so I'm going to fish. So I've got my rig set, say three and a half foot. That's, what I've, that's where I'm going to demonstrate everything today. And it's a depth that hopefully we'll be able to catch a few fish in. So as you can see there, there it's a bit deeper. And because I've got a nice slow, slow slope, my slope actually starts around here. So I've got a depth of about four and a half foot down the middle, which is about here. That's my deepest I'm going to get. So it's a full section shorter where I'm going to fish. So as I keep going across the canal, so it's a nice gradient here. It probably goes every, every foot probably comes up three or four inches for the first part of the slope before the gradient increases and it gets a little bit steeper over towards I'm where I'm going. So I'm just going to keep bouncing along ever so slowly and there I can see my floats nearly come out the water and there I've got the depth that I want to find. Like I say, I can find any depth I want pretty much judging from um, ranging from sorry, five foot, five and a half foot down the middle up to who knows what it is, 10 inches, 12 inches tight across to those reeds because I've got that nice slope so I can pick my spot. So you'll see there, in today's case, that's gonna be the spot I fish, but if I go a couple of inches past, so that's six inches past, you see it comes right up. A little bit further again, see it's right up, that's a full float just within eight inches of my pole. So it's quite a steep gradient there, but that's a good thing. So it's gonna help my bait hold in place lovely. So, pretty sure I touched the fish then as well. That's what I'm gonna go for in today's case. So what I've chosen, I've got somewhere that's the right depth, firstly. First, I wanna plumb up to the middle of my float body. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Nextly, I want as many things as possible for me to be as accurate as I possibly can. So the first thing that I'll always ensure is that this leg is touching the leg of my box. That means I'm always sat in exactly the same place. I'm never leaning forward. I'm always right in the same place all the time from my, my leading right leg, if you like. Nextly, I wanna to work to something. I either want to work to a graphic on my pole, which isn't ideal because you've got to look for a graphic, 
uh, a join or some electrical tape. Yeah, if this were to, to have not ended up being right on my join, I'd have put a little piece of electrical tape on my pole just so I could feel it. So it saves me looking for the, the graphics, if you like, to seeing exactly where my mark is. But in today's case, I'm lovely and I'm on the join of my dolly butt, which is, for me, it, it's exactly where I want to be, on joins of my pole. It's a nice, real physical mark that I can feel. I know it's in exactly the same place every single time. And I know I can be as accurate as possible. And so lastly, after that, I've got my far back markers. So in today's case, I'm going to choose two. I'm going to choose a reed, which I, obviously it's not going to move. And I'm going to choose something in a distance as well. So I've got a nice little spiky bush over there. So as long as everything's lined up, I, I can't be more accurate. I'm going to be in exactly the same place every single, single time. Tingle time, which is what I need to be because I've got such a small window if I just demonstrate now, so I've got, so that's my perfect depth there. And I've probably got a little window left and right from about three inches either way where it stays the same depth. Yeah, that's because I've gone to an angle. Yeah, because I'm fishing at sort of, what are we gonna say? In between 10 and 11 o'clock fishing position, I've got a bit of a wider um, area that I can fish. If I'd gone straight in front of me, I'd have a much smaller area that I could fish in because the, the shelf would be almost parallel to me instead of at a slight angle. So literally I've got that three or four inches left and right, but what I haven't got, I've got nothing forwards and backwards. So if I come towards me two inches, you'll see it drops down there, and same again, two inches the other way, and it comes up. So I have such a tiny little accurate place to work, that I have to make sure everything's lined up so I am accurate. You know, it does seem fiddly, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that, but it will make me more accurate. It, it makes sure that I'm putting my bait in the right place, it makes sure I'm fishing in the right place all the time, and ultimately it makes my actual feed area as small as it can possibly be, which when I'm fishing for such small numbers, I'm possibly only fishing for 10, 20 fish today. It, it gives me the best chance of keeping those fish all located in one area and catching as much as possible with all the fish that come into my peg instead of them being uh, spread out over a larger area and making them a little bit more difficult to catch. So at the minute, I'm, I'm well happy with how that's plumbed up. I'm just gonna have a little talk to you about shotting and then we're gonna catch some fish.